Maytag, which I guess is the same as Whirlpool, Dependable Care, Quiet Plus 2, Dryer. The symptom here is after this thing runs for a while, it stops heating. If you're just here for the quick fix, what was wrong with this dryer, what might not be necessarily wrong with your dryer, and you're not interested in following along with my diagnostic flow, if you just want a quick hit as to what was wrong with this dryer, cue the commercial. It was the solenoid coils. For more information, watch the rest of the video. Maytag dryer diagnosis for repair. This is a Maytag Dependable Care Quiet Plus 2 heavy duty. And the symptom here is when you turn it on it'll heat up seems like for about a minute and then you have to turn the machine off and let it sit for an hour and then it'll do the same thing. It'll heat up for a minute and then it'll just keep running with no fire. So I want to diagnose this. I am not a an appliance repair guy. I'm a TV guy. But a TV guy should be able to fix just about every other appliance where an appliance guy can't really component level diagnose a TV. So we're going to diagnose this if I can figure out how to get it apart. I don't know what era this is. Uh, late 80s, early 90s. It's old school. It's simple. It's reliable. It probably, I don't believe it has any kind of circuit board in it. It's probably just limiters and switches and thermal cutoffs and thermal switches and solenoids. So this should be very, very easy to diagnose. Um, and I'm sure I'll get lost a few times, but let me try and figure out how to get this open. I see we got a, a couple screws down here at the bottom. I'm just going to start taking screws out until I can get inside. Very easy. There are two screws at the bottom down here. Those are these screws, Phillips screws. Those come out and then you pull, you rock the panel forward and it pops out on these clips at the top. So it, it just, yeah. Uh, I'm looking at it. I would kind of like to see a schematic for this that would make this easier for me or maybe more of like a wiring diagram but this seems extremely basic right here so gas valve uh, the igniter is right there the, these go bad a lot I know but I don't believe that's the problem because like I said it gets hot and then after so long it'll shut off and that right there is probably some type of thermal cutoff. Um, we have this here. I don't know what that is. That might be a thermostat. We have another one down here at the bottom. I'm not sure what that is. This here looks like the moisture sensor because this thing will start moving the clock when it doesn't detect moisture. There's a couple there's a couple bars inside here so when the clothing is moist and it has a low resistance it keeps triggering this as it hits it then when it stops triggering it then the timer motor starts running something like that. Uh, not much to this. Electric motors back there. And I will say when it do, when you first start it, you hear a click, like a really loud click. And then you don't hear that after it stops working. So I'm going to grab a meter. I think I did mention that I checked the... Uh, outside the house and it's not dirty. So let's see. There's plenty of airflow. So you hear that click? There goes the igniter. There's the fire.
sure feel that heat clear back here. See there, it just cut off. Let's do this. How do I stop it? Can't open the door. Okay, here we go again. And you see, you didn't hear that click that time I started it. And the igniter is not even getting hot this time around. Okay, I'm going to let it sit for a little bit. Alright, it just kicked back on. And that's it. So is this a... feel any magnetism there. Okay, here it goes again. It seems like it's short cycling. So what is cutting off here? All right, we are cutting off on high temperature that sensor right there. Just watch. So I'm measuring the voltage across that sensor. So the sensor is going open. So it almost seems like a lack of airflow problem where it's cutting off on over temp and it just keeps cycling. Maybe I need to pull it out and take the hose apart and see if the hose is plugged. They're just closed. Yep, I'm over temping. This is wide open, and the air is screaming out of here. Okay, I told you I was not an appliance service guy. I think I'm being a dunce here. It's sucking the air in here and blowing it out the back. The fire, the heat from the, the fire comes in there without a front on it, it's not pulling any air through here so I'm looking stupid right now so I gotta do something to cover this okay this is not really ideal but it'll work so let's see what happens now let's Yeah, now I don't feel the heat back here as much. It's sucking the heat into the unit now. Oops. 
me make stupid myself look. Now it's continuing to work now. Let's see what happens. It's what I thought. I thought it would run for like a couple minutes and then stop. A minute or something. I cut a piece of cardboard and put it on, taped it on there. That way I could watch it and probe around in here and diagnose it when it fails. If it fails. It wasn't a door problem. The door was working. Yeah, now we're sucking the heat in. That one definitely has magnetism. That one definitely has, you can feel it vibrating at 60 hertz. Still burning. Okay, it just cut off. And it did not cut off right there. We still have zero volts there. Interesting. I still feel 60. I still feel it on both of these. This one much more than this one. It's coming back on again. I believe it's cycling on this one right now, which would probably be the thermostat. Let's see what happens here. So far it has not acted up, of course, because I got it open and I'm working on it. Yep, it's cycling on that one, which I believe it's supposed to do. This is the output tube going outside. So that would be your, that's maintaining the temperature. So I was trying to understand how this thing would regulate the temperature, how you could adjust the, the temperature if this thing was just cycling on a mechanical thermostat. And I looked at these other wires going into that thing. Those two wires right there, because the other two are what are cycling. And I, I noticed I had 91 volts there. Well, actually lower than that. And you have this infinite temperature setting here. So when I move that up, the voltage goes down. When I move it down, the voltage goes up. So what that has to be, is that has to be a built-in heater into that thing uh, to assist in varying the temperature at which it cuts off based on the air temperature. So when the voltage is lowest, the heater is, the built-in heater that the thermostat is adding as little heat as possible so it's re relying solely on the heat from the fire if that makes sense it's an interesting way of controlling your infinite temperature 
instead of doing it electronically, it's all mechanical with a rheostat and a heater built into the thermostat. Okay, I believe it just failed. It just stopped working. I put it, uh, I saw the igniter come on, but the flame never lit. And you see, you didn't hear that click that time it started. So you never heard a click. And the igniter is heating. And the igniter goes out, but the fire is not lighting. I don't know what, 20 minutes into the video it finally started misbehaving? So was it the solenoids? Yep, now the gas is on. When I hit the solenoid, the gas came on, I could hear it, but uh, the igniter didn't light. So let me try that again. Uh, actually, I hear it spraying gas right now. Okay, there it just cut off. Now it's going to heat up again. Why didn't it light though? It's something with these solenoids. I hit it and I hear the gas come on and I hit it again and the gas goes off. Okay, this one has got power. This one does not. Okay, that Hear the gas come on, gas off. Something going on in these solenoids. When the coils get hot, maybe the coils, the resistance is going up too high, and the wow, these coils are hot. I'm gonna wait until it recycles again. Okay, there it just shut off. Okay, now it's heating up again. Something going on in these coils. Okay, well not that one. This one I hear it sparking but I don't hear it clinking. See the igniter's on but the solenoid's not opening. That one just clicked on but this one, this one here is not working. Let's let this cool down. I'm going to ohm it. Let me measure the ohms and we'll ohm it out. Okay, the DC resistance on the back one is 1.4K. All right, this one has three taps on it. So from front to middle, which would be red to black, it's measuring 1.6 and it's dropping as it cools off. And from 
front to back, which would be red to white, it's completely open, and from black to white, or middle to back, it is open. So I'm going to let it cool off, and I want to see if this has got two windings on it, and the back one wakes up when it cools off. I'm back. The thing has cooled off, and we're measuring 2,000 ohms now from what would be black to white. So let's see what we get from red to white. So obviously that coil is failing and going open when it gets hot. So from red to white we have 500 ohms, 591 ohms. So uh, definitely this coil is the problem. One of the two coils in that coil. So let me do this, let me turn this back on. And that's the, that's the click when you turn it on that you stop hearing. Missed it that time, but it's already gone back open. Nope, it hasn't. What's going on here? So this is some kind of redundancy thing so that it... Okay, there it goes. So I guess unless, the, if the fire doesn't ignite, it releases this one and never opens the second one. Interesting. Anyway, it needs this coil, guaranteed. Or actually, it looks like they're molded together. Wow, no way to just make something up for that either. I guess I could put a... Uh, what do you call it on that, a big magnet. Yeah, interesting, once it... Oh, I get it, I get it. It's actually a triple redundancy thing. So it, it has a... It has a hold winding and it has a lift winding. So it needs both the hold and the lift, and then once it so probably when the 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 um, igniter is probably the lift and the other one's probably the hold. So when it kicks the igniter on it lifts and holds but when that coil goes open anyway. I, I get it but I can't explain it. Let me see if I can find one of those in today's world. The coils have arrived and I got these off of eBay and this must be an extremely common failure with uh, these dryers because there were a lot of these for sale. And I tried to get the ones that looked like they were not counterfeit and th these were $15 shipped. They go all the way down to $5 shipped for the Chinese ones. These could still be counterfeit. So much of what comes off of eBay now is counterfeit, but uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I guess I want to just believe that these are quality. So we'll pop them in. We know this is the problem. We have diagnosed and proved that this is the problem. We've confirmed it to the point to where we can put the front back on and just pretty much know it's fixed. Unlike guessing. I'm sure there's a lot of people that have watched this and been screaming saying I knew it was the coils from the the moment I saw the first three frames of the video well that's not what this video is about this video is about how to 
diagnose and prove what's wrong, not guess. Because uh, most of the time when you guess, uh, you're going to get it wrong. It's going to come back and bite you in the ass. So just take the time and actually diagnose it. Go through the steps and prove it. Confirm what's wrong. Alright, here we go. The coils are installed. I heard it click in. That's the igniter. There's the gas. And of course it's going to cut off because I don't have the cardboard on the front. 